Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Hard Nine Podcast. Today is March 19th, 2023. We are officially 11 days away from 11 days away from opening day. And we are now two days away from the WBC championship in which our US of A will be playing. Yeah, um, quite the performance in the semifinals. I mean, in the um, quarterfinals and semifinals, I guess. From Trey Turner and everybody, the Cardinals showed out today. Um, Nolan, Goldie, Wayno, and Miles all had big days. So it was a good game, other than Nolan scaring the shit out of me. Yeah, and Wayno, like, trying, doing all he could to make it, like, really exciting early on. Uh, and then has the throwing error on the ball that he does field. But either way, look, Trey, MF, and Turner is on one right now, and it is fun to watch. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's one of the best players in the game. Like, he, he's dynamic. He's batting ninth. He's batting ninth for Team USA. It's crazy. And he has three home runs the last two games. He has the most home runs in the WBC with four of them. He looked great. I mean, that grand slam yesterday was about as electric of a moment as you could have in the WBC. I was banished to my bedroom yesterday because uh, your mom and sister wanted to watch some shows, which was fine. I got to watch the basketball games and the baseball game. I yelled so loudly. I had to have disturbed our neighbors and everybody else. That was unbelievable. What a moment. What, I mean, on the biggest, like, people are talking, like, biggest stage for Trey Turner. He's, I mean, played in one World Series? Trey played in one World, World Series? One World Series. One World Series. So outside of that, biggest stage he's ever been on. Unbelievable. That's, and that's the biggest home run he's ever hit. And that ball was destroyed, too. That might be the longest home run he's ever hit. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it has to be up there. Be. He, was, he destroyed that in Miami, too. Um, yeah, incredible. And then today, Goldie comes out. Um, they go down one nothing and hits a two-run homer to put him right ahead immediately. And everything was going great. Nolan tripled. They, I mean, they were playing really well. But that Nolan Arnato hit in the hand scared the yeah. absolute shit out of me. Yeah. For everybody listening, if you haven't – well, I'm sure you've seen. But if you haven't, X-ray's negative. Uh, you could tell. You could tell by his reaction. You could tell with him at first base. Yeah, you just never Russell, know the way. with your hands. Don't even mess with There's so of many course. bones. There's uh, so many small the little bones. Now, the good thing was, the first thing I saw that made me feel a little bit better was, it's better to be here than on that hammock bone, like Jose Altuve. Is that where it hit him? Wrist. On his knuckle? It looked like right in this area, yeah. So, it didn't I mean, hit Altuve in the again, wrist. Again, you're right. A lot of little finger. bones. Anything can happen. But, it, yeah. It didn't hit Altuve in the wrist. He broke his finger. Yeah, I thought it was his hand. Oh, he, so broke his, right he, broke his, the... he broke his finger. Oh, I thought it said broken hand. No, he broke his thumb. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. So that yeah. Was, that's going to, if you get hit by 90 in the thumb, it's breaking every time. Like that's not. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm glad he's okay. I'll be interested to see how he recovers. Like if he's going to play Tuesday, because to be honest with you, if it's still like sore and swollen, I don't want him playing. He's going to come on. I don't, I, I know he's going to today, play. He's going to play. Like, it doesn't mean I have even... to want him to play. If he's a little bit injured, he should not be playing. Like he'll, on the Cardinals, like, let's be honest. If I'm the Cardinals and he's even a little bit swollen, he's not. I wouldn't let him play. Yeah, I get it. He'll be in there. He'll be, he'll be playing, but I wouldn't let him. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I just don't want to uh, watch it. It anymore. is a shame. Speaking of WBC, and we don't have to spend a lot of time on this, um, but it is a shame for Edwin Diaz. I mean, celebrating what a mess like that. That is absolute flukiness and. Uh, just a wild scene when that happened. It's horrible. I mean, that that was really gut wrenching because one, Puerto Rico being the Dominican Republic as I mean a massive underdog, that was incredible for them and that country. Like the two, like I mean, now Puerto Rico is not a country. Puerto Rico is a territory. That territory, but because they're so close together, and it's been like a a friendly rivalry, I'll say, between like baseball players and to win in that game and then to have that happen. It's just a fluke. Like, that's not something that – that wasn't the WBC. That Like, for me, I, I don't know this to be the case, but it almost seems like if your patellar tendon is going to snap just from, like, slightly jumping up and down, wouldn't it have had to have been, like, already in jeopardy of tearing anyway? Like, how does that just happen? I mean, obviously not a doctor. Don't know that answer. It just seems uh, I, I Yeah, but it seems like it, it just maybe sprained the wrong – or twisted the yeah, wrong – again, who knows? Freak accident. Like, I mean, we see people fall downstairs and have freak things. Who was it that got hurt playing video games and couldn't play for a while? Like, remember that? Like, you could, I mean, yeah. we've seen all of these freak things happen and people want to automatically place blame, which is what we do, I think, as a country and as a society. But, I mean, that's a freak accident. Jose Altuve gets hit. That sucks. 
that could happen in a spring training game. It's happened many times. We saw what happened to Brandon Nimmo get hurt in a spring training game. I mean, I mean, when you're out the there worst playing injury, professional sport at a high level, you could get hurt. The worst injury that's happened this off, I mean, this preseason, I guess I should, I should say, was Gavin Lux, who was not in the WBC. Like, there's Correct. been what, like, three injuries in WBC that are notable. Like, it was Freddie Freeman slightly pulled hamstring. He's fine. He's going to be ready for opening day. And then obviously Altuve being out for two months at least. And Edwin being out for probably the whole year, they said he's going to try to come back, but I wouldn't, I, I would doubt that he does. Um, those are only three. And obviously, Nolan was close, but thank God he's fine. But, but I mean, I think I've seen more in the in spring training. Like, yeah. Uh, I honestly. know. Um, tomorrow night, Japan, Mexico handicapped that for all of us. Uh, I think Japan, I mean, Roki Sazaki is pitching. So I, I bet Japan wins by five or six or more. Because well, that put Darvish against the U.S. in the championship game, and they said Shohei is going to be ready to close. So I would think so, yeah. And does that set up Merrill Kelly to start for the United States? Hey, let's talk about that because we're a Cardinal <laughs> podcast. And I'm pissed off. Why is Miles Michaelis being treated like Brady Singer? Well, well I I'm mean, there say, might be a reason. No, there's not a reason because while Mosella said today in an interview, he didn't know why he wasn't starting. Yeah. Miles Michaelis is the best starting pitcher on that team, and it's not I even agree. close. Not even close. I love Lance. Well, Lance Lynn's pretty good. No, he's not even close. Like he had like a whole run more ERA last year. It's not last even close. year. But if we're looking at the whole, okay. like in the last three years. Okay, one. fine. Like, then if you give me Lance Lynn from 2021, I'll change my tune. This is 2023 Lance Lynn. Miles Michaelis is the best pitcher on that team. Starting it, pitcher it's on weird. that team. I don't he quite had, understand. He has the, be- the best ability to get quick outs and to get you probably six innings on the 80 pitches he can throw right now. Why has he not started a game? And more importantly, today, why is he in the game? Why is Brady Singer not yeah. coming in when you're up five runs and letting Miles Michaelis start on Tuesday? It makes no sense. Well, I think – well, Brady Singer, is he not even with the team anymore, right? He's there. Oh, I thought he was gone because – No, he's there. Birth of his childhood. Okay, he's back. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that answer. Obviously, he used, what, seven pitchers? They used seven pitchers last night. I'm not sure that has something to do with it. But I, I agree with you. Uh, it does not that set make... it up for anything positive to happen on Tuesday night. For it's the just USA. stupid. Yeah. It's stupid, but let Merrill Kelly throw today. Right, I agree. Like, like, what are you doing? Why Merrill Kelly might get rocked against Japan? Like, honestly, when did Kelly and, pitch last? That is a good question. Like, I uh, I don't know. Is he the same? Um, a day after Miles did. Okay. Yeah, I, I not, don't understand. It's not five it. days ago. I don't and know. More is, is like, it... they're not gonna score ten runs off of you, Darvish. No. Like, probably not. They might, but probably not. So you've got to have your best pitcher set to go on Tuesday. I agree. I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah, I thought for sure that when I saw Wayno starting night, that means Miles pitch in championship game. Like I literally, and I, I thought that was one hundred percent the case. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't. So, but by the way, Miles pitching do. really well because that's just what he does. He should be yeah. pitching on Tuesday. The guy doesn't get rocked unless he's in Colorado. Um. All right. Well, let's switch. You know, switch over from the WBC. We I feel like we spent enough time on that in the yeah. last couple episodes. Um, while you are tuning in, thank you again very much. By the way, ten percent Japanese listenership. Thank you. We we love that. While you guys are watching, if you could hit that subscribe button, greatly appreciate that. You can see all of our socials here and in the and then the tagline where everything you need to find us, you can find us. But if you could hit that subscription thing, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, nice week for us last last week. So yeah, yeah, it was. Um... The new bar video did well. I think that was expected. Like we said, the video yep. title of the video is Lars New Bar is an international superstar, or whatever it is yeah. that I said. And he, I mean, there it is. Like that's why he's, he's getting all the love right now. Yeah, absolutely. Guess well, what? Maybe later oh, this week yeah. we'll probably be talking about him again because he's going to probably be playing his two teammates in the championship game. Correct. Correct. Um, all right. I there's so many things that we want to get to with this roster, with the Cardinals. And I know that our next podcast, we're going to kind of break down who we think splits camp. Um, four guys cut, not cut, four guys sent down this this week. Uh, Gomez, Rivas, um, Zuni. Gomez. Zuni. Moises? No. Yeah, he was. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. No, he was not. Thomas, G- T- Gomez, Thomas, Herrera, and Rivas have been all sent down to the minor league. Moises team. Gomez was sent down and I missed it? Yes. Hey, hey, way to be on top of things on spring break as a Cardinal podcast. Wait, I don't think that's true. It's absolutely true. Gomez, Thomas, and Herrera were all assigned, reassigned last week or the last time. And okay, then, okay. Uh, re- 
Revis sent down today. So you got 20 more cuts to go. A way to keep up, though, Junior. You, hey, you're I, on spring break. I, I, still, I still don't even see that. I don't think that happened. Yep. Okay. Well, it did. Um, and since it did, you're down to 20 left in the in the big league camp. All right. Uh, the to cuts to go. So let's talk really quickly. Um, not really quickly, but let's talk. Uh, the Outside of Jordan Walker, the hottest name right now in spring training for the Cardinals is his best friend, the guy drafted the round right after him. Uh, again, thank you, maybe Uncle COVID for that. Mason Wynn. I mean, having an unbelievable spring currently right now with a 1.026 um, OPS and a 405 OBP. I mean, he is absolutely tearing it up. Two home runs, nine RBIs, 23 total bases. Um, ma- I mean, making showing us what Mason, what what the future looks like. With that being said. Any chance you believe Mason Wynn makes the opening day roster? No, there's like, there's actually, if there were an injury, knock on wood, if there were an injury, yes, he would make it. Okay. So an injury to one of the big middle infielders, I'm not even going to say names. I don't want to put that out there, but if that were to happen, then I would say probably, but given where they're at right now, it doesn't make any sense for Mason Wynn to be up at all. It really doesn't like I, he's been fantastic and way better than I think anyone thought and more advanced than anyone thought. And he's honestly, he's done all he could, but he came out, he had a quote that he said, I could have gone fit. I could go 50 for 50 with 50 homers. And I still might not make spring with the guys. ahead. I mean, make camp with the guys ahead of me. Like, obviously that's not true, but like I hate what he's doing is awesome. I think we should just like accept it for what it is, which is showing you one that this kid has grown a lot. We said coming into the off season that, Hey, this is his second full off season of only focusing on hitting and shortstop. That could be a massive jump for him, and it looks like it maybe it was. So that's great for him, and he looks like he can handle the position. The great thing about Mason Wynn is even if he's not hitting and he comes up and he slumps whenever that is, his defense and his speed will never slump. So he'll always provide value to your team, and I, I'm really I'm really encouraged from what he's done so far. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize. Maybe not. I shouldn't say that because I don't know that 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 number there. But he was drafted as a two way player. I mean, he was one of the top two-way guys coming out of high school in 2020. Again, COVID probably did us justice by because he only played one game, I believe, this year. He was suspended from the team, a uh, violation of team rules or something like that. And then COVID hits, and it just felt like he just kept dropping. And boom, there, there he was for us, a, a guy who tried to go into the minors and do both. And, mm-hmm. you know, again, missed that whole 2020 development season. Here he is at the age of 20, I mean, knocking down the door – and I, I agree with you. And, and, you know, the the argument is so easy to look at spring training and say, look at this guy now. He's not in the same development category as Jordan Walker. So you are dealing with two, you know, people say, well, they're the same age. What? What? No, it's two different humans and two different trajectories. With two different, also skill two sets. different needs on the on the team. There's also that. Um, so I, I'm with you. I think what Mason has done is shown out and that's what you wanted from him. That's what you wanted to see. What he, he has done, everything he could ever have done, and he will be a great shortstop at Memphis until the Cardinals decide it's time for them to bring him up. I think he's. I think what he has done, instead of looking for 2024, for that being when he's probably going to come up, I think he'll be up at some point this year. It could be. Like, I, I won't argue about He's definitely about accelerated. Also, his... March 16th, by the way, Gomez sent down. Yeah, I know. I just saw it. I don't know how I missed I'll, it. I'll accept really your don't. apology. I'm not going to apologize um, to you. But what anyway, what Mason is that, that arm, that defense, the way he swings about his poise, his composure. You can tell he spends a lot of time. He and Jordan Walker spend a lot of time with each other. They not much faces seems to face those guys. It's spring training, right? We we love to take the stats we want to pick out. Like somebody goes off, oh, we got to be on the big league starter. Uh somebody struggles, oh, they're working on things. So we know that spring training can be whatever. But again, I go back to the point that what he has done is he's firmly entrenched himself as a guy who is sitting there ready to take a spot when a spot is open or needed. Yeah. If you're Tommy Edmond, if you're Brendan Donovan, you better play well, like you better have got there and play well, or that guy is there. Like he is there to come up at some point in time. And here's my other point that I don't think like people want him to come up and I get it. Cause he's been great. Like I'm not taking that away from him. He has been really good. One, I think he needs to develop more. I don't think he's ready to be up right now, but two, I don't really think having two rookies to start the season being in your lineup 
necessarily the best thing for a team trying to win a championship when you have veterans that are other options. Like I'd ra- I don't I don't want two good rookies immediately up on the team. Like what? It, it just doesn't seem like a good formula for me to start the year when you have guys like Tommy Edmond, who's a better, much better option as of right. Right. Now. That's the thing. I think again, I will say it's two different positions. It's two different trajectories of humans where they're at right now in their development. I, in my mind, let let's let Win play every day at AAA until you, until you have to knock on wood. Maybe you don't, but until you have to. Now, with that being said, the Paul DeYoung injury changes there's a lot of things with this roster, which we're going to kind of go through on the next part, but we have to still talk about it. Do you think maybe we've seen the last of Paul Dion as a St. Louis Cardinal? I think it's possible. Um, I think it should be the last we've seen of Paul Dion. I think last year should have been the last we've seen of Paul Dion. I think two years ago, maybe even should have been the last year, last we've seen of Paul Dion. So will it be? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. But Taylor Motter has made a case to say, hey, he played yours up today, played it pretty well to say, hey, I'm going to be the utility infielder because, one, he's a better hitter than Paul DeYoung, in camp at least. We'll see if that translates. But also, like, I don't know. I think the organization has to just be fatigued. Like, honestly, it does. Like, Paul DeYoung yeah. has all these swing changes. He comes back, he can't throw, so he's not fielding. And then he he's your defensive replacement that can't throw. Then he can throw again, and now he has back problems. And it's all this stuff. It just seems to me like this happening, they let him go. Like, let him go yeah, to we- another team. We are talking about an organization who in the past has shown reluctancy to cut anyone that they have money tied to. There is precedence there for them to get rid of, of a guy. I it, I just don't know what it, there is. To me, there's no future for Paul Dion here. Mason Wynn knocking down the door. You've They, they played Donovan at short. Now they're playing Modder at short. They have Kramer Robertson. I, I know Modder has an option, has option left. I assume Robertson, since they got him back after they DFA'd him, probably has an option left. So you have manipulation through the roster there. Uh, I don't know if that means you keep Paul Dion because he does not. So it's either cutting or he's, when he comes back, he's on the roster. And I just don't know how you stare everybody else in that locker room in the face when honestly he's your, out of those guys we just talked about, Kramer, Robertson, Motter, and I mean, Win and the list goes, he's the worst of all of them. I don't think he's worse than Kramer Robertson. Kramer, like, there's no way if they played a full season, Kramer Robertson would have a higher war than Paul DeYoung. We don't know. We don't know that. I would no. He won it because Paul DeYoung still puts up positive war every year. Kramer Robertson can't hit. Like, let's be honest. I like Kramer Robertson as a person. He's he was great at LSU. He's not a major league caliber. He's not Paul DeYoung. Level He's not going to make the roster. I'm but not arguing. Anyway, that, like, but... yeah, I agree. I think I just think they have to be over it. Like, that's what I think it might come down to. Is I'm just saying, like, I. I, like Carlos Martinez, I'm over it. Just let it, no more pitching for you. You're shut down for the season. Like he, they've done this before. Like Johnny Peralta is the best example to me. They were just done. They were like, okay, yeah. you know, we're halfway through the season at that point when they cut him. Just, just go. We don't need you anymore. Like for me, I, I don't, I don't think Paul Young would be a bad person to have on your team as your backup infielder. But I think for the Cardinals, it might just be like, get him out of here. Like, you know what I mean? Stop worrying about fixing his swing all the time. It might just be a headache at this point. Yeah. And you know, my, my other question, I mean, obviously also with that alone, they've done it with Ty Wiggins. They've done it with guys in the past, but Dion a little different, a guy drafted, developed and extended. So a little bit different there than the other guys that we're talking about. However, I mean, also, if you look at it, like I'm a big proponent of, Hey, we're going to keep 26 guys. Let's keep the 20 best 25. I understand 26 is your backup catcher. All right. I get that. Not every team goes into the into the you're right not every team goes into the season with two really really strong catchers like people freaking out over the backup catcher are wild however so 25 give me the best 25 with the ability of brendan donovan to play shortstop i think it i honestly think we'll talk about this this again on the later in the week but i think it comes down to between alec burleson who has made a strong case and modern like do you really need a backup middle infielder when you have gorman edmund and donovan i think it pez is in the same conversation you don't think you think he might be sent down to? I don't think he has a guaranteed spot at this point. Okay, no. all right. And he shouldn't, if we're being honest. Yeah. Like, no, if we're I looking agree. at it, Alec Burleson might be more of this team than Juan Yepes can. Hey, do, you, do you think the only problem is Yepes is from the right hand side? Like that. That's why I another... say that we have enough right handed power. Yeah, but I, I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't know how they're thinking. Like that's an, an interesting one because it's like it is Walker making the team. Like that's one. Like right. should he? I think so. But will he? I still I'm not 100 percent convinced at all 
that he's going to make the team. But if he makes the team, then it's between, I think, Yepes and Burleson maybe for a spot. I don't know what they're going to do. Like, it's interesting. But we're coming up on, like, it's a week from it's now. It's going to happen soon. Like, it's coming yeah. soon. Yeah, and like I said, coming back to win because he's just so fascinating of, of a player in the fact that, you know, you send him to, to AAA to play every day. Like, you're not going to bring him up as part of an infield rotation. You have a 6'4 guy at shortstop in Tommy Edmond. You have a gold glover who finished in the top rookie of the year with Brennan Donovan. And you have a guy in Gorman who is absolutely doing, who did everything he was asked by the team and looks un- unbelievable. Hit another bomb again today. Uh, is having an unbelievable spring. And that's a guy you want in your lineup. That's a guy with 30 to 40. We've talked about him a lot on here. 30 to 40 home run pop. He's not going to AAA. All right. No, so no. those guys, right. That's not even a discussion. These people who want to talk about it, it's not. But it, it sucks for Win. However, like we said, it's an incredible problem for the St. Louis Cardinals to have. When we're sitting here talking about one of the guys, Burleson, incredible year last year. Yep, has hit a two-run jack in the playoffs. Mason Win has sky remember there were talks about when a year and a half ago they were worried about him not being able to hit at the big at, at any level mm-hmm. he's proven so far at every step that's not the case i mean is this is unbelievable where we have all of a sudden found ourselves it is it is and like it, it's it's a great problem but in a couple months it could be a problem correct like you got to be able to get these guys at bats you've got to decide who can be on your bench because young guys that are talented are going to have to be a uh, bench players for you because those are the only guys you have. So you're going to have to be able to decide, okay, who are the guys like Juan Yepes? Is he, are we okay with him being on the bench 60, 70% of the games and halting maybe what could be some valuable at bats and who are you not okay with that? So you have to send him down. That's the most interesting thing to me is you have to decide who you think is going to benefit most from getting at bats at AAA and who you believe can be up here on your bench and that'd be fine. Cause like, yeah. That's, That's interesting. Like Alec Burleson, if you think he still needs, you still want him to work on some things, then he can't be up on your bench because he's never going to play. Right. Not with the way right. Gorman and the outfielders are playing. Like he's not right. going to play. So I don't know. Yeah, which makes the case. And I was wrong because I said vehemently a couple of days ago, uh, this guy is not making the team. I think I was wrong. It makes the case for Taylor Modern. 31 year old. He has 400 at bats. That's not a lot in the big leagues. He's been a journeyman his entire, like entire life. Shout out to him for being 31 and still trying to chase the dream and showing up and having a really solid spring, but it does make the case to say, okay, our triple a outfield is going to be Gomez Mercado and Burleson every day with win at shortstop. And that's what we're going to go with. And I assume Kramer Robertson is probably going to be down there too, unless they end up to DF, DFA him. I don't know what his options look like. I'm, I'm not That's trying to speak out of pocket. I don't know that answer. He is 28 years old. I don't think that he is the yeah, key to this so. team. You know, like, right. Yeah, it's interesting because Modder, he had two home runs yesterday on Saturday. Um, so I, I don't know. I think there's the chance he makes a team or they want to play him at shortstop today. Like, there is no other reason to do that. The only reason they did that is to see if he can do it, to see if they want him to make the team. And yeah, I, I just don't – I don't know. They have so many guys, and it's it's a headache. Like, there's a – you can, like, map out and be like, okay, we know these 10 are on the team. Like, there's around 10, maybe 11 guys that you know for a fact are on the team. And Jordan Walker, we've said this all spring, he changes whatever else happens. Because if Jordan yes. Walker is on the team, one of those guys that you thought coming into the year was going to definitely be on the opening day roster, not Gorman, but other guys – will not be on the roster and they're going to be pissed off. And I don't know how that's going to go, but it, it's tough. There is a log jam. Yeah, absolutely. Now, while we're talking about log jam, and again, we don't need to to give away where we're leaning as far as who we think is going to make it or anything else. But while we're talking about a log jam, let's talk about a couple more, a couple more things. Okay. Um, let's talk about Matthew Libertor. All right. Yesterday, very, very solid outing. Uh, Velo up. Uh, I did see a lot of people talking, people who watch Matthew Libertor way more than I have, who I trust and follow along with. They'd like to see him use the slider more. I think the organization's in that same boat. Um, mm-hmm. Very nasty slider. But he has looked very solid this spring. I mean, with Dakota Hudson absolutely just shitting the bed again today. I I mean, is Libertor your, like, obviously he's going to be, he's not going to be on, he's not going to make the team. He's going to go down and get starts at Memphis where he needs to be. He needs to be a guy who pitched just every fifth day stays in his routine and gets prepared for the next move up with he and Jake Woodford sitting there. I mean, that's not, I mean, where do you, 
Okay, I'm not phrasing this what how I want to. What question are you to, asking me? But <laughs> that's not, not yet. That's, do you think Woodford heads down maybe to Memphis too to be in that rotation so they keep him stretched out in case of a need? Or do you think that they feel comfortable enough with Libertor that Woodford maybe makes this team as a long relief or even a guy who can come in and get you big outs in the sixth, seventh inning? I don't know. Um, I don't know what their plan is. I think Libertor makes the team. I mean, not Libertor, Woodford. I think Woodford makes the team. Um, but I think I want to get to Libertor for a second because Ali said, and I agree with him, that this is the best he's ever seen him. That's the best I've ever seen him because he looked like he confident. He has below on his fastball. His fastball is actually riding up in the zone. It's not flat and easy to pick up. He was landing his breaking ball in the strike zone. He looked great. Um, mm-hmm. I think, if anything, this spring has given me more confidence in the pitching depth of the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, yeah. The high end pitching still not still need to see if someone's right. going to step up and take the reins of a number one pitcher, but in terms of the depth that they have, I think they're better suited this year than the last two years for sure to withstand injuries that are going to happen at some point with pitchers because that just ha- it happens. I think they're better suited this year to be able to call multiple guys up. And to me, the most interesting conversation is Dakota Hudson shouldn't even be in the equation. I I am over it. Dakota Hudson should not even be on this team once this year, unless we have 25 injuries. He, I, I hate to say it because he was really good for a year, but he was one of those guys where he always looked like he shouldn't have been good because he was walking everybody always. Correct. And, and you have been, hold on, let me pat you on the back. You've been telling me this when I kept trying to say, oh, I'm, I'm in the DAC camp to come back. You've been telling me this for three years. So you've been on that. Yeah, I know, it's not that I don't like him. I'm sure he's a great dude. He's got to go somewhere. Right, none of this start. is personal. Agree. I know, but I he just he can't he can't be on this team anymore. He's not good, and I don't want to be. So as you think as he that. ends up at Memphis? Like you think that's? What I don't know. Do? I don't care. He could be. be a yeah, player. I don't know what to do with him either. Now, adding that he to gave that, up, he gave up like know. five balls hit like over a hundred and five today in the first couple I innings. Know. It was dreadful. Well, Wayno's done that a little bit too, but but okay. Don't now me. this lead and again. <laughs> You don't have to answer it right, but or you don't have to answer it all the way because we don't know. That's always the answer. Andre Pallante, do you think they view him as a as one of that depth pieces of their starting rotation? Or do you think he makes the club as a bullpen? Like that's you're looking at guys like Libertor, Hudson. I'm I'm only throwing him in there because he is part of the team right now. He's part right? of the, He's on depth, the 40 man sure. roster. Yeah. Right. You've got Libertor, Hudson, Woodford, Pallante. Do you feel like they view all four of those guys as potential rotation guys? Like that, and I think the reason I asked this question is I think that does depend with your depth and with the question marks in our in our rotation that you have to look at whether or not you keep a Woodford or a Palante up here or if you send them to Memphis so that they can pitch every fifth day with Libertor. Like that's why I'm asking the question. Here's what I think. I think Andre Palante had an uptick in velocity after WBC. He was throwing 98, I think they said, which is fantastic. For me, Andre Palante is a guy that would be in my bullpen because he's so good. And because you don't really trust your lefties other than Zach Thompson all that much, and he's better at getting lefties out than he is at getting righties out. So he would definitely be in my bullpen. But if there were to be an injury and you're like, okay, we're going to bring up Woodford or Libertor or whoever to get starts, that's when I would send Palante probably down to get stretched out just in case. Like you can do that with him still because he has options. But for now, he's definitely in my bullpen. Um, Libertor, I want to get back to him in a second because I don't feel like we gave him just go ahead, go, go right ahead. Um, but before we do, because I think Woodford to me is the six starter today for me. Okay, okay. he's the Good. guy that I would I would have him up, he'd be in long relief, and I'd make sure he stretched out with bullpens and things like that. But he Which would be you the could guy, do, that, especially early it, in the year. And they said it early in the year, there's there's the way the schedule works out, they're gonna have times where they have a six man rotation, yep. not like a full six man rotation, but there'll be times when other guys are getting starts that aren't in the starting five. Um, so Woodford's that guy for me now, but Libertor was, I think he, other than like Walker and Wynn, the guys we talked about, and Gorman, he's been the most impressive pitcher to me by far outside of Zach Thompson. Those two lefties that they have right now look like they're starting to blossom and kind of figure out who they are. And I'll be honest, I didn't think Libertor was ever going to. He no, at least I think here. a lot of, most people didn't. And and then that's kind of shame on me because he's still young. He's still uber talented. He was a high draft pick. He was a top prospect in the Rays organization. But he's looking like he's starting to figure it out a little bit, and hopefully Dusty Blake's helping with that. I think he probably is. But I'm really excited to see where he goes, and I hope he's down in Memphis because, man, if he goes down there and he shoves for the first month and we need him, 
that's going to give him some confidence because he was not very good at Memphis last year. So I am really, I'm really excited to see what 2023 Libertor looks like. And really I wasn't like before to, spring. Really would like to in the next couple of weeks, if we can get Kareem on or Kyle Reese on, because I, I'm intrigued to see where, where Graceffo ends up, where McGreevy ends up, where Tink Hentz ends up. Uh, I mean, you've got where, where Jerpy ends up. I assume Jerpy's at Springfield, but he could start the year in Peoria. I think Jerpy starts in Peoria, probably. Okay, yeah, but we're, I mean, Tink is he at, is he at Springfield? Probably. Like I, I'm intrigued I to see what they probably do not. with these young guys. And then obviously, there's multiple guys I'm forgetting their names who we just drafted last year who will probably be my guess is Peoria like, or Low A. Yeah, like Bryson Mouse right. guys like that. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just intrigued to see the path that they're they're viewing guys like Graceffo and yeah, him. we just don't know yet. And, right, that's that's it. Well, I, Graceffo. I, the, the pitching depth really is in a good place right now, like a really, really good place. Well, it's credit to them because it has not been that way for a while. And most of all, credit to Woodford, credit to Libertor um, for going out and doing what they were supposed to do this offseason and coming Long back and time. having a strong spring training. Even if that even if that doesn't translate to the rate, to the season, still, at this point, they've done what they were supposed to do and they look really good. So credit to those two guys because we need them. We need them because someone's going to get hurt. Like It's going to happen. Yep. We need those two. Which, by the way, circling back also, which we've said earlier, credit to Mason Wynn as well. Like, whatever work he put in in the offseason, it has paid off, right? I mean, we knew the dude was uber talented. Like, that wasn't the question. But we've seen him. We've seen Gorman come into camp. We've seen Taylor Mott. Like, we've seen these guys who were asked to do things in the offseason. We don't know every conversation. Donovan. Dylan Carlson is having an amazing start. Like Slow down. Well, I mean, he's been he's very been really good. good the last couple of games. He looks really good now. Yeah, he's had some I mean, tough breaks, but he looks good. Yes, he has Which, had a lot of tough Dylan breaks. Carlson, man, he he looks really good the last couple of games. He's played really good. And it's boosted his OPS over 850, I believe, for this. It is over 850. But um, striking out a lot, which isn't characteristic of Dylan Carlson to me, that could just be spring training. He's trying to get his timing down. And he's also yeah. trying to add a little bit of bat speed and power. So all of that combined into probably going to swing and miss a little bit more, which I'm okay with. Uh, so it's interesting. If Dylan Carlson keeps putting up numbers, Jordan Walker, I don't know what happens with him. Like he has to be up, but at the same time, do you would you blame the Cardinals for saying we really need to see what these three guys are before we bring them up? But I think I would blame them because I think Jordan Walker is <laughs> yeah. one of the three best hitters maybe on the team. My answer, like, yeah, my answer is maybe. My it's hell of a pickle. It's a hell and, of you know, a I got into a discussion with a guy today on Twitter who brought up a really good point. I don't necessarily agree with this point. We'll talk about this a little bit more, but how he viewed the fact that he thinks Walker if he's not at triple a makes a team and one of those outfielders is DH. I don't see it that way. I think Nolan Gorman gets the, the bulk of the DH against, especially against right-handed batters. Now the argument could be made if for what he's saying, if, if you are correct and yep, is maybe is on the fence and maybe does end up in Peoria, then, you know, against a, a tough lefty, one of those outfielders potentially. Carlson. Yeah. I mean, if you want to leave Lars in that, in that lineup, right. So that there's a lot of options there. We'll, we'll go back to the fact that I'm kind of glad I'm not Ollie. Yeah. Except for, <laughs> I, I wonder, does this make you wonder? Like I'm interested. I'm really, I can't wait for this roster to come out. Like I'm really excited to see Me what too. they do because I want to, I want to imagine, do you think Ollie and Mo are on the same page on everything? No, no way. Like I, it makes me wonder because if it's Ollie's roster, Jordan Walker's on it and he's playing every day. Yeah. Yes. So if Jordan Walker's not on it, I'm going to be fairly confident to know who probably made that roster right. decision because like what manager wouldn't want Jordan Walker on their team right now? He's been incredible. Well, he I, did I don't know. hit a ball 115.9 miles per hour this week. Faster than any Cardinal since Marcelo <laughs> Zuna has hit one and harder than Goldschmidt has ever hit a ball in his career. And Trey Turner, like the list, there was a list, right? Yeah, but it was I a was pretty good list Cardinal of guys. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like Mookie well, Betts was on that list. Yeah, Trey Turner, like there was a really good list. Yeah, One hundred and fifteen point nine is almost like, was he using like a Black Magic from the nineteen nineties? Like that's what it makes you think about. That's John Carlos Stanton, Aaron Judge type exit velocities. That's and that's it a, makes sense because he's the size yeah, of unbelievable. Him. Like he's huge. right, right. To me, he's so impressive, man. And we talk about him every episode because guess what? We probably should be talking about him every episode. He's been going through. I don't want to say a slump, but he's definitely slowed down. And I was like, I wonder where his batting average ranks. Like just because that's the stat I was looking at, and it was on the thing next to everybody else. He was still like fifty points higher than everybody else on the Cardinals. Yeah, 
Yeah. It's, like he's incredible. Like wild. we're talking about this Mason win great spring. He's been really good, but he's been like 320. Jordan Walker's still in like 370. Yeah, Gorman is up in the, oh, in the three teens, I think now. Three twenty four. Yeah. Like that. Um, okay. So let's just let's talk one more one more thing about about the bullpen because, like I said, our next pod we're going to come with our who we think is going to make it. We'll be wrong, but we'll. So, we're okay, still but come. I want to ask you that question actually. Should we do? Okay. Um, who we think will make it or who we think should make it? Uh, I'm going with should. Like that's that's okay. My, those are two different things. Uh, they are, but my game is should. All right. Okay. So that's um, what we'll do. Which leads me to what I'm going to ask you. Okay. Mm-hmm. I go back to what I said earlier tonight. I want the 25 best guys that are ready on our team. Just say 26. Right? Well, yeah. I mean, okay. 26. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Well, it's not 26, though, because our backup catcher. Well, yeah, because you want is, the best backup. Isn't one of our well. best guys. He's okay, your best he's backup doing. option. Maybe. We're, I mean, there's a shot that we have Palante and another guy in the minors because Drew Verhagen and Chris Stratton are on this team. Yes. Well, all right. Now, do you DFA, think that yeah. is simply because? Let me give you an option or, or three options. One, they're under contract, and and we know that that's not something the Cardinals love to do is eat contract money. Do we believe it's two because the Cardinals know that they need depth and cutting those two guys who you're not going to option the minors because you can't. So if you can't, if cutting those two guys now makes your pitching even thinner, right? So sending a Palante, young Palante down and somebody else down keeps the depth in, in the organization. All right. Or three, fill in the blank. Um, well, I, I have to answer that. I think they're going to both be on the roster to answer any of the other questions you just asked. <laughs> so I'm going to say, no, I think one of them won't be on the roster. I don't know who. But I think one of them is going to get DFA'd because I don't think you can send down your third best reliever last year, third most reliable reliever last year. After him being on the team all of last year, he was your third best reliever. You're going to send him down 2022. I'm three. No way. No way they send Andre Palante down. Okay. So what does that if mean they for, for Hennessy Cabrera? should burn the stadium down. But that okay, these are questions I'm asking. You and I talked about this earlier on the phone. Yeah, but there's no like, way. And that was by the way, I, Cardinals, if okay, you're watching, you, I'm not gonna you, burn the stadium down. We can never on, say stop. you there's no way. Stop. Hold on. Cardinals, if you're watching, I'm not gonna burn the stadium down. That was a joke. But what I will say we just got flagged. We just got yeah, flagged. Yeah, right. What I will say is Andre Palante, like he has earned a roster spot. I could not give a singular shit about the other two. Those two guys were not Andre Palante last year. They won't be Andre Palante this year. If you want to go win. Like they should be in the mode right now where they're trying to win a top two seed in the National League. It's not going to be easy, but they should be trying to do that because let's be honest, if you want to avoid flukiness as much as possible, you can never fully avoid it in baseball, but as much as possible, you got to get in that five game series immediately. So if you're not going to put your best foot forward in April when the games count the same as they do in September, then what what are you doing? Like you're going for a World Series this year. Go for it. Put your best players out there. I don't care. Now, the, the counter argument to me saying I want my best 25 is, well, you you idiot. You, you just said Mason Wynn should start the year at AAA. He's not one of the right. best infielders on to start. Well, is he better than Taylor Motter? That's different, though. That, there's circumstances. I, I agree. I, I agree with you. I'm just saying that is the counter argument to what I'm saying. Now, what does that mean for Henesis Cabrera? I don't care. You know, to be honest with you, I'm okay – I'm okay with people be going to the WBC, but I am not okay really with him going to the WBC because one, he didn't pitch very much. And two, you're trying to earn a job after you take the cause arbitration after one of the worst relief pitching seasons, second halves I've ever seen. Like for me, the, the arc of Genesis Cabrera from before he threw the ball down when Ollie came out to get him to now has, has been incredibly disappointing to the point to where I don't even think he's in their plans. Okay. All right. It, it, again, questions I answer. I should have looked up before we came on here. Does he have options? Does he, can he go to Memphis? Yeah, he has options. Okay. When he came up in now, 2020, I don't think he was sent down very much at all. Okay. So, Next guy, Jordan Hicks. He's on the roster because he's one of the okay. most electric talents in baseball. Not arguing that, but the results are Jordan aren't Hicks is always... on the roster, I'm going to bang my head against the wall. Are you going to burn down the the guy the threw three Latte? three shutout innings in the playoffs for us last year? Yeah, yeah, I I agree with you. I've just seen a lot of talk. 
That's why who? I always like to bring it out. Who's talking now, about? I don't that? know who they are. Well, about Jordan Trey Hicks, those 103 mile power sinkers. What's he going to do? Go down and scare AAA kids and come back up? No, I'm not arguing with you. I just want to. He's not going you. anywhere. Just wanted to ask, bro. Just wanted to ask. Um, ask one other thing I want to get to before we get out of here. Greg Amsinger, we we kind of buried him last week. No, we, we did him. not. You did. <laughs> I backed way. Greg Amsinger. Either way. I love Greg. Big fan. All right. D- do not agree that Lou Lars new bars are fourth outfielder. That's what I'm going to say. I think this is like the however, third episode in a row we brought that up. <laughs> however, he did say that he's picking Steven Matz to be the comeback player of the year. Thoughts? Go. Well, I hope so. He looks really good in spring. I, I'm a big Steven Matz fan because I think he has great stuff, and I think he can be really, really good when he is healthy. When I when I stop liking Steven Matz is when he's never, ever healthy. So yeah. if Steven Matz is healthy, 100%, he's going to be good. I have, like, and what to what extent, like, he'll be below a four ERA with this defense easily if he's healthy. And in car- the current state of baseball with DH all around the league, that's good. That's a good pitcher. So I think he's going to do that. Now, how many innings is he going to throw? I, I don't know. Is his knee okay? He didn't get any procedures on it. That's something I'll monitor throughout the year. But I, I would love for Steven Matz to be that because we need him to be. Uh, yeah. At my confidence level, I would say of him returning to 2021 Steven Matz, let's say, is probably around, I'm going to say, 60%. Because I just don't – his health scares me, man. It does me too. I'm a little higher than that. He seems to be on again, off again. So it feels like we're good due for an on against Steve. He Matt, is an Steve every Matt. other year pitcher. Yes. yes. So I feel I feel like that's what we're on. Um, you buy there into were two that things stuff? I wanted to hit on also. I, I hey, I'm buying into whatever can help us be better. Well, I guess yeah. I mean, me too. But um, I don't want to go into it blindly. And I don't want to get into six months from now too much. All right. But if Mace, I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to hate. Okay. This is August. And our, our our fans are going to hate me for this and no, I'm okay really, with that. I'll take it. yeah no okay just so yeah. if mason Wynn goes down and does what mason Wynn has done mm-hmm. all right he did this spring he continues to get better we see what brendan donovan at 25 years old can do and we see what nolan gorman at 23 years old can do and and let's just say they are doing i'm not saying that their ceilings are reached this year i'm not saying that does that uh, does that make tommy edmund expendable at the end of the season are you asking me if he's expendable during this season or after this season? At the end of this, at the end of the season, or even come August. Not exp- They're not going to trade him. I don't, don't mean that. And at the trade deadline, I would be shocked unless he falls on us. Okay, so what's shocked. the question you're asking? Them? So the question is, you're talking about a guy who uh, ask the um, question. My goodness, <laughs> let me answer. <laughs> I, it. I got to frame the context. I got to phrase it right. All right. The question is, do you see Tommy Edmund as a Cardinal after 2023? Uh, there is that better do i see Tom? yeah i do i do um and d- that's two different questions and him being expendable is do you want to give mason when the question would be do you want to give mason when the keys to the source opposition in 2024 with nobody to back him up with no insurance policy if he does what a 20 he'll be 21 at that time if he does what almost every 21 year old does and comes up it fails because that's what happens so for me, Tommy Edmund, it's tough. It really is tough. Mason Wynn would have to prove it to me that he can be the everyday shortstop in the major leagues before I move off of a six, seven war player in Tommy Edmund. And to me, Fair. like they love Tommy Edmund. Like they love Tommy Edmund. It would almost make more sense for me if they did something else and play Tommy at second base every day. And at the same time, like we can do a thing where it's like, okay, well, Mason Wynn's playing shortstop. Tommy Adams playing second. Donovan's moving all over the place like Vin Zobris. And then Gorman's DHing. Like, you can keep all four. It just makes it really tough when you go into the postseason and you're putting your best lineup out there. Is Brendan Donovan no longer in that? Like, that's where it would get tough. So, I, I don't know. We're just going to have to see how it develops this year. Like, if Tommy Edmund well, let, gets even also... better this year, like, he has been trending upwards a little bit, and the shift's going away, which I think is going to help him a lot, then no. Then no, you're not trading that guy. Like, there's no way. Good. I, I just think that the, I think that's a discussion that the Cardinals are going to have to have because if Mason Wynn comes up and let's say 2020, he's playing every day. All right. They, they, the Mariners did it with a 19 year old A-Rod. I'm not comparing Mason Wynn to 
A-Rod. A-Rod. But I am saying that if a guy at that age, like Jordan Walker, we talked about on here, if you're going to bring a guy up at that age and you think they're ready, they're playing every day. We saw J-Rod do it in Seattle. We saw Michael Harris do it in Atlanta. We've seen it happen all across the league. It happens every time someone that age gets brought up. Right. That's agreed. Like Harper did it. And we saw that trout yeah. like, and then got set down. So I'm just saying, like, I feel like that it, it be, makes it difficult. And here's what I'm going to say to your point where it gets difficult for me to wrap my head around, because I always tell you a leads to B, which leads to C. And we have to come back to a, you talk about if Edmonds playing second, Donovan's playing everywhere. Not if new Carlson Walker and O'Neill are, are doing what they can do. And Gorman is doing what he can that. That's where the questions become. Is it Tommy Edmund? Is it Brendan Donovan? Maybe Mason Wynn struggles in AAA, and this isn't even a discussion. But I don't know why that would happen. Like, it's I, not going to. Right. And I guess the argument is, well, Tyler O'Neill, is he a free agent at the end of this year? Or does he have one year left? He is one year 20, left. Until 2020. Right, okay. He's free agent after So, again, it opens up a lot of questions that I'm getting us way far ahead about, and I'm not trying to. But those questions are. are also questions that we have to answer. <laughs> like, honestly, Caleb, for a, 10 days from now. Or 11 days, whatever to, to, it is. I keep putting the wrong number to, up on, on social media. They don't have to answer those questions now. Um, no, they don't. It's the Mason Wynn question. They don't. Because that, that question to answer, Mason wins in the minor leagues, and he should be. Correct. Uh, for me, I it just – it sure is setting up to where if you're – you got to – it's almost like you have to choose Tommy Evan or Mason Wynn. Like, it really is setting up for that. And if it's Mason Wynn, well, you know, what does that mean for Tommy, who they love, who it's like – I, I don't know. It's a tough question to answer. This year is going to tell us a lot because if Tommy Edmonds is great, again, if he repeats what he did last year, no way you let that guy go. That's one of the best players right. in Agreed. baseball in terms of value. But if he kind of goes back to what he was in 2021, it's a little bit of an easier conversation to have. Yeah. I, it's just so fascinating to me, dude. It really is. Like, I don't all even like thinking so- about it. How about this? Uh, they're going to do what they do, and I'm going to criticize them if they're wrong. Fair. I don't have to make the decisions. I don't have I think to do that's it. A, it's not on me. I think that's a very, very valid point and a good way to look at this. Um, um, all right, last thing. Uh, last night, shout out to the 314. You had 39,000 people at the Battle Hawks game and 23,000 at the city who are 4 0, by the way. 62,000 people showed out last night on a cold, cold, now obviously Battle Hawks indoors, but on a cold night in St. Louis in the middle of March. That is awesome. Yeah, it was. Love it's to really see cool. It. Um, uh, what's, oh my gosh, what's it? St. Louis SC. I, I blanked for a second. First MLS expansion team ever to go four and out to start the year. That's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. I mean, awesome to have sports back in St. Louis and the Cardinals are coming back pretty soon. There's going to be four teams in town playing at the same time. Yep. Yep. So, it, so that was cool. I, I think that days, we need to days. hit on that. Shout out St. Louis. Um, I didn't. Thank you. Thank you as always, everybody for joining us. We greatly appreciate you. Uh, as always, tell a friend. Hit that little subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate that. We will be back next time. We're going to go through our rosters. We're going to talk about this roster depth, which, by the way, both big fans of not bashing anyone on our team, just simply saying it would be nice to know that there was that was out there. That's all I'm saying. That's it. Okay. Agreed? No. All right. So that's <laughs> what we said as of now. Hey, hey, Tuesday night, watch the game. Uh, we don't know Japan or Mexico versus Team USA. That's going to be interesting be Japan, to watch. Right? It has to be Japan. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's the, that's what. But hey, well, we don't Sasaki know. Also, is pitching, but, dude. Yeah, this tournament, the NCAA tournament, has been incredible. We're off till Thursday night. Uh, been a lot of fun. You got a lot of sports going on in St. Louis and all around. Thank you guys as always for joining us. We will talk to you soon. Go Cards.